are you serious? Are you serious? Is there really an asteroid by the name of 2016 WF9? And is it really coming very close to the Earth or even in, on a collision course of the Earth, maybe, February 25th? Well, what's really wild here, folks, is that there are scientists uh, that are saying that this asteroid exists. What's uh, strange, though, is that NASA had originally identified it and has now removed it from its list. Uh, if, uh, listen to this. If there is an asteroid, 2016 WF9, perhaps it explains why NASA is covering it up. That a comet or an asteroid, they've named it 2016 WF9, is destined to hit the Earth next month, February 25th or potentially could hit the Earth. That's a big difference, guys. Anyway, and wipe out millions of people, according to one self-styled astronomer, Dr. Doiman Damir Zahorovich has warned the impact could wipe out a city if it strikes land or cause a devastating tsunami if it lands in the sea. Now, today my guest is Gil Brazard. We have four questions for him. One of them is, is there an asteroid, 2016 WF9? And if so, how close to the Earth is it going to go by? And why was it originally listed by NASA and has since been removed off their charts? Now that is a question for Gil Brazard. Number two, where is Planet 7X? Planet X, where is Planet X? Give us an update on that. Also, he has an announcement, a major announcement for March 15th and 16th of this year. March 15th and 16th of this year. I don't know what it is. He said, I'll make the announcement today on the broadcast. And then, what about Revelation chapter 12, that wonder in heaven? Is it going to take place in September of this year? Uh, we're going to get all of those questions on the table with Gil Brazard. But let's go back to this asteroid, because NASA revealed earlier this month that a comet or asteroid, which they call 2016 WF9, would pass very close to the Earth on February 25th, but has been quietly, eerily, very softly removed from the scene. They originally estimated it was somewhere between uh, about a half a mile wide, somewhere between 0.3 to 0.6 of a mile. Okay, so somewhere close to half a mile wide. That is huge. Now, NASA has said it is likely that WF9 comes from the outer solar system, but Dr. Zaharovich is more specific about its origins. He believes the asteroid comes from a uh, giant hidden planet known as Nibiru or Planet X. And uh, he, he really does believe that this is why they're no longer talking about it. It is not going to hit the Earth. If it did, it would be a, a cataclysmic. But the object they call WF9 left the Nibiru system, he says, in October of 2016 and has been spinning counterclockwise around the sun. Uh, since then, NASA has known it will hit the Earth, he says, but they're only telling people now. Okay, folks, <clears throat> we, I, look, I, I don't want to go any further with this report. I really don't. Uh, I, I'm just going to ask Gil Brazard his opinion of it. I'm looking right now at the asteroid chart. Yesterday, we had an asteroid go, I mean, um, two days ago. On January 30th, we had an asteroid go whizzing by. The asteroid was called 2017 BH30. It was small. It was only 8 meters, but it came less than 25,000 miles from the surface of the Earth, or 0.1 lunar distance. What? Now, that was close, and, and NASA did not tell us about it. They say they didn't know about it until it was within two hours of going by the Earth. Now, Yesterday, five asteroids went by, 2017 BN30, 2017 BJ30, 2017 BY5, and 2017 BT6, 
and 2017 BB7. Now, those five asteroids all went by the Earth and are listed in the Near Earth Object Chart. And uh, tomorrow, there's three more going to go by. 2017 uh, BB6, 2017 BQ32, and 2017 BS32. And the list goes on. But nowhere on the list is this mysterious asteroid 2016 WF9. It was originally on the list, but it's been removed by NASA. Why? Well, we're going to keep a close eye on these things uh, and ask Gil Brizard for his professional input, as well as the other subjects that we just mentioned. Are you serious? Now, here's what I do know. I know what the Bible says. That The, the Bible says that the... There shall be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and distress of nations with perplexity, and the sea and the waves roaring, and men's hearts would fail them for fear, for looking after those things coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Okay? So I know that. I also know that the, that the stars are going to fall from heaven like a fig tree cast as its untimely figs, as it's shaken of a mighty wind. I know that the heavens are going to roll back like a scroll. Uh, these are all, I know that we're going to have at least two deep impacts that bring about the wormwood effect, the bitter, the poisonous water, and a third of the people of the earth shall die. These are things I can find in the Bible that I specifically know are going to take place. If planet X or planet 7X or Nibiru or planet number 9, like NASA now calls it, if it is part of what brings it about and God's using it for this, then we're going to find this out. And if there is such a thing as an asteroid that's a half a mile wide, that's going to miss us, but going by the Earth close, why did NASA post it on their charts? And then why did they remove it? What is that about? And I've seen NASA change the size of asteroids. I've seen them change the distance of asteroids as they recalculate. But why put one on the chart and then take it off? What is this about? Well, we're going to ask Gil Brazard. Don't miss today's live broadcast. Jesus is coming soon. That I know also. And you don't want to be left behind. Give your life to Jesus Christ. He's coming soon. Gil Brazard, my guest today. And Steve Quayle, tomorrow. What? And Mike from around the world, Friday. We got to get some answers. Are you serious? Are you serious? Okay, guys, now you know that there's an asteroid coming uh, Wednesday, it's going to come very close to the Earth, a near-Earth object, according to NASA, just discovered. They're calling it 2017 BX. It's 30 feet in diameter. It's 10, uh, 10 meters in diameter, and it's going to go whizzing by the Earth on Wednesday. You haven't heard anything about it, but check it out. I'll put the link below at spaceweather.com, right on the chart. There it is. Also, today... We have a, a huge coronal hole turns toward the Earth from the sun. This hole is opened in the sun's atmosphere, and it is spewing a stream of solar wind into space. An extreme ultraviolet telescope on board NASA's Solar Dynamic Observatory uh, has captured the photograph of it uh, on the Earth today. On this January 23rd, this is a cor coronal hole, in a region in the sun's atmosphere where the magnetic field opens up and allows solar wind to escape. It is Earth-facing, folks, and this very gassy filled stream of a gamma rays and ultraviolet rays and radiation is streaming right toward us. That means we're going to feel a lot of pressure on the planet, which could create, of course, major earthquakes and tsunamis or volcanic eruptions or power outages in some cases. But normally, power outages come from the solar flares. These are, of course, solar winds or a solar stream coming through the uh, sun's atmosphere that has a me mega hole in it, allowing it to flow right toward us. Earth facing puts pressure on us and we're going to continue to keep a close eye on this because in the next 24 to 48 hours you may begin to see earthquakes popping up 
in different locations, which could be very, very dangerous and damaging. I'm, I'm checking right now, just so you'll know, uh, in the last few hours, of course we had that 7.9 earthquake that hit Saturday night down in uh, Papua New Guinea. But just in the last few hours, we have had a 5.1 earthquake in the northern Mid-Atlantic Ridge, a 4.5 in Alaska, a 4.3 in Pakistan, a 4.4 in Chile, and we just had a 4.7 in the Solomon Islands. And this, of course, the pressure just building, but the, st the solar streams from this huge uh, hole in the, in the sun uh, has not reached us yet, okay? So in the next 24 to 48 hours, even 72 hours, let's say, give yourself three days to allow this pressure to build, we'll see exactly what is going to take place from this major coronal hole in the atmosphere of the sun. And oh, by the way, the radiation levels, which you don't see, are still spiking on this planet from two directions. The solar um, minimum that the sun is in, releasing its gamma rays of radiation from the sun and the five waves of energy as wave number two we're in the middle of this well, not in the middle but we're in now into the thrust of this second wave of energy and it's really uh, really spiking the radiation levels off the charts last year alone we had a 12.5 increase in radiation from the year before off the charts normally i mean it's either the same, less, no more than a 1% ever. 12.5? And the second wave of energy is now pounding us to right now, this year. So keep an eye on it, folks. We'll keep a close eye on it. Um, we don't know. We're living in times we never thought we'd ever see. But it's all matching the biblical prophecy. You start talking about the asteroids whizzing by, the sun. The Bible said there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring and men's hearts will fail them for fear for looking after those things that are coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then, then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to come to pass, he said, look up, lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. I'll be back with more current world events and how they relate to biblical prophecy. We're living, folks, certainly in the last days. Are you saved? Give your life to Jesus Christ. Don't be left behind.